And we're off! Welcome to the 57th episode of the Brave News Channel. I am your host, Shali, and we're here with Risky. Say hello, Risky. Hello. Wow. And this <laughs> is the show that brings you all of the information for your favorite application, Brave Frontier Global, mm -hmm. available to you guys on iOS, Android, Amazon devices, as well as Windows. And today is another show from home <laughs> because... <laughs> This is yeah. just the reality that we're living right now, and it's the best that we can do um, under the circumstances, but we're still going to make it work. We're still going to try to get you guys mm -hmm. all of this um, amazing information about the content that we can expect this time around. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are slowly gearing towards the next season of the year, which is summertime. So Risky, mm -hmm. what can we expect for summertime this year? Well, uh, this, this year, I think... Uh... The Brave Summer 2020 uh, mm -hmm. logo is really earlier than ever. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I recall last year we, we wanted to we wanted to like uh, pr um, uh, preview the logo, but it was not ready. But right. there you go, a very unique logo of shark and fire. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's more violent than usual. <laughs> like usually the other logos are yeah. a little bit like more sweet like they That's have right. a little bit of like cute adorable stuff mm -hmm. in it but here's just like shark week it's brave <laughs> shark week <laughs> well but it's actually a hint of something appearing in a going to appear in oh, uh, remember okay. the special character that we mentioned in the previous bnc in, oh, in the summer finally theme? we get yeah. to see this mysterious character that i've been That's wondering right. about this whole time so okay, yes. really excited for that okay so so we do have in the next slide we have the okay. um, uh, special campaign for the brave summer 2020 which is the hero selector summon so nice. you can get uh, you can get your brief summer uh, hero selector ticket from the login mm -hmm. campaign so as usual uh, uh clock, clock in your login like uh, every day so that you can mm -hmm. get the tickets uh, and you can also obtain your unit of choice from uh, basically vortex arena season four nice yeah so, so many uh, to choose from yep so this is a chance for you guys uh those who didn't manage to get uh, the character from season four it's a chance mm -hmm. for you to complete your collection as well yeah, yeah. i i'm a, like i said before i'm a rabbit so i think i might go for uh, mr rabbit himself but we'll see because they they all have such cool designs so it's gonna be hard picking just the one to take home with me so we'll see <laughs> we'll see yeah we'll see and uh Next slide, we do have a special Brave Summer 2020 dungeon featuring a Summer Phelan as a reward mm -hmm. Omni unit. Nice. Uh, nice. And mm -hmm. we also we have uh, going to have the big sister in Yala's alternate art, uh, as Which you can see on the right side. Which see on screen right now. Yes. Yep. And uh, also the reward uh, gift, uh, which is the Brave Anerod. Mm. I see. Wow, those, this alternate art is, is pretty interesting, don't you think? <laughs> I love the color scheme. <laughs> yeah. I love that for some reason you can't tell whether she's standing on flames or waves because it has a color combination of, of both. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, as we know, her Omni version is her with the Hanya and she's kind of surrounded by this like green smoky fire. So I think they tried yeah. to keep the Japanese like traditional feel yes. in her um, summer version. But at the same time, you know, giving her a more modern look gotcha. you know in regards to like her bathing suit and what she's wearing um to the beach so it's, yeah. it's a very strange like collision of of the traditional and and the modern and in one um unit but i i absolutely love the color scheme it's like my favorite thing it's yeah, it's, cool. it's kind of like yeah what that's what you mentioned earlier is 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 very uh nyala styles but uh, mm -hmm. it, it's also uh, embody the the modern touch on, on it right and i think it's going to be very interesting to see how the comic will look like because uh, oh yes summer, that's right with this get up uh, i believe there will be a very interesting or <laughs> exciting yeah comic coming in. we always get the the summer wallpaper that kind of mm -hmm. like extra art that the art team puts out with much much love every single yep. you know year every <laughs> almost every single season of the year. Yes, yes. Um, so that's going to be fun to look forward to for sure. Yeah, I totally mm -hmm. forgot about that. Now it's even more exciting than before. Thanks, Risky. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so uh, look forward for the uh, comic or the world people that will be coming, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. as, as I think as I mentioned earlier in the in the logo of Brave Summer, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, it's a, the logo itself is basically uh, the part of the two upcoming characters. Oh, okay. Uh, and a special character with summer theme. So I guess I'll pass it to you, Charlie, for the next slide. Okay, so <laughs> let's go on to the next slide then, because on the next slide we have Nyami! Everybody's oh, wow. favorite cat girl is making a comeback. And yes. I have to say, I'm not the kind of person who plays games to get, you know, the girls in the swimsuits or, you, you know, that's just not me. It's not my cup of tea. I understand, you know, the people who, who play for that kind of content. <laughs> uh, but this Nyami is adorable. Like, yes. she is so freaking cute. I could not get over her. And I love, absolutely love the tint of her hair because mm -hmm. it's got this like fiery red like undertone to it that her <laughs> original uh, like blonde self did not have. So I'm enjoying the touch of like summer that just yep. shows off like in her hair, the touches of the flowers everywhere. Um, her swimsuit is really cute. Like everything about it, I love it. The only thing that confuses me a little bit is the little like goldfish or koi <laughs> that's like on top of her, like as part of the aura or whatever. That's the yes. only thing that kind of like throws me off, but like, She's she's like a tiny little model. Yes. <laughs> with with pudding in hand, of course, because she couldn't be Nyami if she didn't have any pudding. So yeah. <laughs> I, I am absolutely like taken by this design. I wasn't expecting this at all, and I absolutely love it. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I think I think it's just really uh, creative in the sense that mm -hmm. I, I I thought it was like a fireball. It's actually a ko koi, like it's a yeah. a goldfish. Yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. goldfish. And uh, if you notice uh, carefully, I think the element, her element will be probably fire because of the yes. volcanic uh, uh, rocks nearby her, her feet there. Yeah, yeah, it's a hot summer apparently <laughs> yep. for Nyami, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's interesting and I guess her getup is more like a... a, a not really a bed, uh, like a swimsuit is more like a, a I guess, beach getup or something. <laughs> Honestly, it's like an yeah. outfit. Yeah, like it's outfit, not. It's yeah. not so much a swimsuit. It's more like a summery outfit, yeah, and summary I think that's why I like it so much because it. it I mean, it, if I were the adorable type, I would want to wear that kind of thing. But I'm hmm. more of like the grown up, like just don't. I don't want to deal with you type. <laughs> so, like, it doesn't fit my personality very well. This kind of like outfit, but I think for Niami, it's absolutely perfect, and she looks hmm. so cute. So so cute. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see the the animation. No? The yes, animation. I'm very interested to see how the koi like works with her on screen. Like if she sends the koi to attack, or I don't know, she's got a fork in her hand. That's a weapon. Like you don't know if she's gonna go stabby stabby on your face. Like it could be anything. So is that is that a weapon really or even? Like, <laughs> it's like you can sell it. Yeah, new weapon type, new weapon type for Nyami. So, okay. or maybe she'll just throw her pudding in your face, but I don't think she would waste it like that because she loves her pudding. She, she, she wouldn't probably waste it in that way. Right, right. But that's Nyami for you guys, yeah. a new fire element, Nyami. Please look forward to her. I hope you guys are excited because we know that you guys love Nyami and have loved her since the beginning mm -hmm. of time, since, you know, her inception. So hopefully yes, yes. a lot of you are very excited to see her in this brand new summary form. Mm -hmm. But she's not the only one that's coming uh, to join us this summer because on the next slide we have Phelan, mm. which is it's such a weird contrast because you know Phelan. When I think of Phelan, I think of like a ball of green, just yes. like just really vivid green, like forest, the jungle green. Because she she's a wolf girl from you know the forest slash mm -hmm. jungle where she just lived with her tribe and she was just like a feral kid of nature mm. but now we have this summer version of Phelan who is a water element unit mm. and she's surrounded by all of this blue sea you know Sorry. complete with sharks almost I don't know if the sharks are on her side I mean obviously they have to be like on her side right like yeah, <laughs> if they're part otherwise. of her aura because it would be very stressful if they were just trying to like attack her the whole time but um, they, they look absolutely ferocious um, and it's so weird to see all of that, like, you know, such an intense image in the yeah. background, just kind of colliding. And yes. then like cute little Phelan in the middle with like a fishing rod fishing and rod. a little like summer hat and she's got the pigtails. It is a very kind of like confusing image <laughs> in a good way. 
in a very good way. You have like these terrible monstrosities that are absolutely yeah. like scary, and then right. in the middle, this like cutesy little adorable Phelan just trying to catch a fish or two. <laughs> <laughs> catch a it's shark, amazing. Yeah. Catch a shark, like who yeah. comes up with these things, Risky? What uh, what do you think? Uh, I, I think that it just it, it just shows that our our artist team our art team is is really like imaginative. I guess mm -hmm. they have, they have a very wild imagination. Like hey, let's sure. let's, let's let's fish a shark. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know <laughs> who it was. Be. I want to know what the process was. This was like when you think of summer, what do you think about? And oh. somebody just went like sharks. I, when when <laughs> I think about this just happened. When I think about summer uh, on a beach, it's probably like a coconut tree, you know, like right, uh, right, right. You know, like relaxing, a tropical drink, yeah. <laughs> drink, yeah, something like that. But yeah, but oh. somebody in the art team was just like oh, sharks. <laughs> sharks is the answer, and now we have <laughs> Phelan surrounded by sharks. Is that not amazing? Because I think it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I guess I guess it's it's going to be. Um, I mean, there must be, there must be a reason why. Uh, the, the 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 effect of the character itself is 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 you know like being a shark or like a goldfish, fire right. goldfish and the water shark. So I guess right. we we gotta gotta look for the uh, you know more 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 story about this characters. I guess in the dungeon itself there's probably some cutscene on that. Too. I I would hope so. I would hope hmm. that they expand on it just like they did uh, you know hmm. with Sunny and Krissa like back in the day when they yes, yes. first came out um, but I think it's it's a lot about the duality of, of fire versus water mm -hmm. you know two elements that are always constantly like fighting right. each other um, and uh, you know Nyami is a cat and Phelan is, is a wolf which is like a dog so it's also yeah. a cat versus dog so you hey. see a lot of like you that know uh, legendary rivalries I guess you could say coming up in this uh, brave summer <laughs> that's, that's a nice conclusion though <laughs> i didn't add. yeah i didn't understand yeah that there's right. uh, i i see what you guys are doing here <laughs> team I, I love the way that you think this is amazing stuff mm, so I yeah see. guys look up look forward to this uh, absolutely adorable phelan she she looks like a dream mm. she looks like a like a big summer dream just you know as long as you are okay with sharks, <laughs> sharks. <laughs> but, but she should be really fun to use and hopefully her animation on screen is even more right. fun to watch so i'm really looking forward to her and mm. hope that you guys are too now okay. moving on to our next unit because we don't stop here during the summertime the next unit is Suizen, and Suizen is an Altered Destiny summon unit. Mm. Um, I believe Suizen is a boy, first of all. Let's just get that out of uh, the way. Mm -hmm. um, and he is connected, obviously, to Hakuzo. You can see the similar type of like traditional Japanese uh, elements in his outfit and in mm. his aura. Uh, but what connection does he have to Hakuzo and then the other seven circle fiends um, remains to be seen. Uh, what is clear about Suizen is that he is very well attuned with uh, nature around mm. him. And in particularly uh, thunder, which is the element that he specializes in because um, I believe that he is based on the Japanese god Raijin. Raijin mm. is the Raijin. god of thunder. Uh, of thunder and lightning. So, um, if you look up Raijin in um, Google on Google or whatever, you will see all of those um, like circular type of things like behind him. Um, Disc. Or something. It's it's just kind of like for some reason that's always the design that he's depicted with, and so he's yep. in it has those um, around him as well. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what he has to add to um the lore of the seven circle fiends which still mm. remain like pretty much um like a, a pretty big mystery among all the lore that we already have in brave frontier i think mm -hmm. the seven circle fiends are something that we haven't um expanded too much into yet yep. so looking forward to seeing him in action what do you think risk about Suita? I think there's so much mystery in this character. Like, uh, it's mm -hmm. uh, if you if you look at a glance, it's, it's not it's unclear whether it's a it's a male or female. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a male with a female touch or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, he's a little feminine. Yeah. Yeah, feminine touch. I mean, but but yeah, I mean, like the character design is is pretty unique. Like Hakusu as well. When you when you look at Hakusu, it's like this is mm -hmm. this is uh, n n nothing nothing we have ever seen before. <laughs> kind of design. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's I... a lot of ambiguity because there's, there's, you know, Hakuzo is kind of like, 
he he's the humanoid version of a fox, right? So he's not yeah, even yeah. human. So he's like a, a beast human, and then Suizen is like an androgynous, you know, Man, boy who <laughs> kind of looks like like everything is just like a mix of something else. So there's a lot of elements at play, which makes it really interesting. I think it's going to be very interesting if they can expand the Seven Circle Fin uh, storyline, I guess. <laughs> Yes, I'm really looking forward to it because yeah. I'm all about that, you know, Japanese traditional stuff. So that's very <laughs> exciting to me. Sure. All right. Okay. Well, mm. uh, with that said, we can move on to the next piece of content. Mm -hmm. Risky, can I pass it on to you? Sure. So the next content we will be having is the Vortex Arena Season 5 uh, Tenebrous Showdown Preview. So this time around, it's a dark element. Uh, and we will be having the, uh, uh, the same as uh, previous. Um, element as well adjustment of the daily and overall rank rewards for the uh, exclusive sphere for the rank uh, 1 to 1500 will be dog's loyalty mm -hmm. and uh, rank 1501 to 6000 will be carlan cast mm -hmm. um, uh, as you can see on the on the, on the right uh, carlan cast uh, sorry the dog's loyalty would probably be the one at mm -hmm. the bottom um, and the event bazaar will be dragon's intrigue will be uh, added as well to the event bazaar so uh, just looking at this, I guess we already can know which Zodiac uh, uh, character will be coming uh, in yes. the next uh, Vortex Arena. So shall I, I pass <laughs> it to, to you, Shelly? Sure. Yeah. So the next one that we have here, the next Vortex Arena summon that we can expect is Kirk. Yes. Or Kirk K. I, I want to say Kirk. I, I think Kirk, Kirk I think it's K or Kirk. Kirk <laughs> I, I wish, you know, our notes came always with, like, phonetic pronunciation. Yeah. Most of the time they do. Most of the time when the name is really difficult, they will tell us how to say it so that we don't mess it up. But uh, this time around, I don't really see uh, mm -hmm. a note regarding the pronunciation <laughs> of his name. So I'm really sorry if I'm saying it wrong, um, you guys. But I'm going to just say Kirk from now on as a disclaimer. Yeah. Kirk. So Kirk um, it represents a dog in the Chinese Zodiac, of course. Mm -hmm. As you can see, uh, the aura very much represents um a dog there and right. he has got a bunch of you know collar inspired pieces <laughs> that he yes. wears as like Chakra. you know he's not just goth like he's not wearing collars because he he's goth or like emo or whatever he wears them because that represents like uh, a domesticated dog um <laughs> if you would yep. and i love the fact that he's actually using uh the collar as a weapon Hmm. Um, because that is what it is. Like he just has a gigantic collar that he's gonna either like hit people with or swing at, uh, send out like a boomerang or something uh, hmm. against his enemies. And he he's making it, it's kind of like a deep metaphor for something. I feel because hmm. when a dog is wearing a collar, it means that they're domesticated, that they're bound to a master, master right? But yes. he's using he's using that as his weapon. <laughs> That's deep. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like, is he trying to make a statement about his freedom? Like, I don't yeah. have a master, and just like throwing his collar as like as, you know, as a symbol of his own freedom. Like, am I reading too much into it? <laughs> I think you're you're reading too much, but that that could be true. I mean, like, we we have yet yet to know the full story about the character. Right. Mm. Well, I mean, Kirk doesn't necessarily have a master per se. He does serve Emperor Yu because mm. every single one of the um, Zodiac animal inspired mm. units serve Emperor Yu and they're all right. competing against each other um, to become, you know, his uh, assistant. Mm. So I guess in, in the sense that that is his master, then I guess that then that would be technically correct. Mm. But when he comes to the world of the mortals, he doesn't necessarily have a master down there telling him what to do. Mm -hmm. um, what he tries to do, you know, being the dog, dogs are known for their loyalty uh, and companionship. So he decides to stay, you know, stick up for humans and try to protect them as much as he can. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't really see it panning out the way that he had imagined it. And so he kind of starts delving into a little, little bit more like underground type of stuff where he meets um, the dragon um noxa and in in her bar her establishment mm -hmm. he meets kind of like a bunch of misfits that he then takes under his wing mm -hmm. and they become his like pack so then he becomes the leader the of, leader of, of the this pack. pack and then he's in charge of like protecting them and standing up for them um uh -huh. and then acting as their leader so uh if anything he becomes a master of like a, a bunch that. of small fries, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So it, it's it's kind of uh, ironic, mm -hmm. uh, in a sense that the the dog known for his loyalty and companionship to a human um, also does have to assume the role of like leader Ninja. for you know those who are weaker than mm. himself, uh, which is what Kirk demonstrates when he joins the rest of the Zodiac animals um, right. on the mortal realm. So, mm. a very interesting character. Again, I happen to see a lot of symbolism in him, a lot of like <laughs> metaphors happening. Yes. I don't know if I'm just like, my mind is just going because I see all these things and I'm making stuff up that is not there, but... <laughs> I think he's interesting. What do you think, Risky? Um, I just have one comment. The mask. I want that mask. <laughs> oh, the mask. Well, I think... <laughs> Can you see the mask? It's like there's, the mask has this uh, bones, bones drawing there. It's really small. Does one. it? It's really cute, you know. Like... It's, it's kind of small for me on screen, so I can't really tell. Let me try to blow yeah, up the it image. Try to blow up the image and you can see that's the two bones there. Oh, it's, okay. It's gonna be um, used... So the mask that he's wearing on his Omni Evolution it's different, um, yeah. is actually not a mask, it's a muzzle. It's a muzzle, It yes. changes the whole game. But yep. yes, I see the, the bone design on his um, seven star. It's kind of like a crossbones mm. uh, <laughs> on the mask, which is a, it's a, it's a really cute design. Um, but the Omni, you know, zooming into the uh illustration you can mm -hmm. see that it's a muzzle and, and yep. you use a muzzle on a dog when you want to keep them from biting someone yeah. um so usually the image of a muzzle it, it inspires a lot of like fear Very because strange. you think that the dog is like aggressive yeah. so he he's trying to make a statement but then it's really cute that with the muzzle he's wearing this kind of like headband that has like dog ears yeah. on it <laughs> so like <laughs> He's trying to look ferocious, but at the same time, he's got like these adorable like dog ears happening. I just, I think our art team just enjoys really mixing up like things that should be opposite of each other together and just seeing what happens and how it affects like the visual yeah. characteristics of our units and stuff. It's it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah. He's he's cute. Um, I like the the color palette is also really good for hmm. for a dark unit. That's I think right. these colors are you know exactly on point. So I'm very much looking forward to Kirk coming along. Mm -hmm. Should be exciting. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I think that does it for the content that we have to mm -hmm. share with you guys today. Do stick around for the Summoner's Corner coming up next. Okay, now it's time for the Summoner's Corner where mm -hmm. you guys ask all the questions and Risky has all the answers. So we're going to start with our good friend of the show, Bookworm13x. Uh, lovely to have you here again. Bookworm would like to know, for the Selector Ticket Summons, will Rex be selectable going forward? Uh, also, rather than Lord as a default type for your ward units, can it be Rex going forward? So two, two questions there, mm -hmm. Risky. All right, so the answer is, uh, well, Rex will remain exclusive to the specific Mystery Frogs. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, it, it cannot be selected in the Selector Ticket Summon uh, for the reason, uh, well, for the quite obvious reason, the, uh, Rex being a little bit more superior than the rest of the type. I see. Uh, that's so why we I don't think... want to just give everyone like, yeah. a super OP unit because then... <laughs> Where's the challenge in that? But there is, there is, there's a, there's a purpose of like, for example, this mystery box uh, containing uh, that can change your unit type to Rex to be available mm -hmm. for, as a, as a reward. So I guess it's, it's going to like, to help to motivate players to, to, to compete and to uh, perform better in the event, uh, or even we can use it for like uh, promoting, uh, you know, like um, uh, login and everything, login mm -hmm. campaign. Right. So yeah, unfortunately, the selector ticket summon would have it. And for the also for the reward units, uh, the we will, we will stick to Lord type for okay. for now. There is no plan mm -hmm. to change it to Rex. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, sorry to say, Bookworm, that Rex is still going to be a little bit harder to get, just mm -hmm. because it's that much more powerful than the other types. So uh, we're gonna have to work a little bit harder to be able to get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the next question, which I believe is also by Bookworm, mm -hmm. uh, 13x. Uh, this is also tied to the Rex type, and he is asking now that the type that we're focusing so much more on types, uh, when we evolve units, will the units not change type as they evolve anymore? And if they do evolve 
uh, or if they do change type when they evolve, uh, will Rex be included in the types available? Mm. Can you clarify, Rex? Okay, so to clarify, I think this so-called uh, changing type when evolving did happen uh, in the past, but it's uh, we treat it as actually as, as a bug, not feature, <laughs> because it is not meant to be uh, for your unit to change the type uh, randomly when you evolve. Because uh, can you imagine that it's going to be very annoying if you any at that time when your attacker become uh, change from breaker to or oracle? Oh yeah, I would I would be. <laughs> yeah crazy with rage yes. and it's and <laughs> it's a happens. unit it's not you know it's a unit so you don't want to like it's not easy to get that one unit and if you change accidentally change it to another type that you don't like or doesn't fit the unit itself it's going to be very uh, annoying for the player so right. actually we treat it as a as an issue and we it has been fixed a long time ago um, so there is currently no plan to to, to put that uh, uh, so-called uh, issue back and even if if there is such a chance again, uh, as mentioned earlier, Rex should actually be uh, something that you want to change on purpose. <laughs> you know, not not by luck. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, that's why I think Rex should be uh, not should not even be in the rotation in that case. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but, that makes total sense. Mm, but uh, again, uh, the team encouraged the uh, summoners to actually build squads with that consists of different types, so that they can they can fully balance and utilize each type bonus uh, squad buff. So right. remember that if you put the unit of the same uh, buff as the same type, the buff won't stack. Mm -hmm. The right. buff will not stack. So you will you will basically you are losing one slot of additional buff for your party. Right. So we do want to focus on having as many different types mm -hmm. of units in your right. squad as possible, but it should be something that hopefully is under your control more than anything, rather right. than randomly uh, changing type to something else when, you know, Evolving. that was not how it was meant to to be played or how it was meant to be done. Right. Um, so yeah, so for now, the answer towards anything Rex is that you will have to be the one who changes to Rex on mm. purpose, and yeah. you can only do so via Mystery Frog. Yeah, and, and probably that's just that. probably compete and uh, participate in the event as much as possible, and then save that Rex for your preferred unit or something. Right, right. Yeah. So make sure that you are doing every single event that's coming along and getting all those login bonuses so that you can get said Mystery Frogs to get hmm. your Rex type. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Risky. Now we're going to move on to our last question by Razor Dragon. Um, uh, Razor Dragon is under the impression that a lot of the rifts that we have had, Frontier Rift um, events that we have had, um, are kind of building up towards like a final showdown with Gazia. But I think he might have forgotten that we have like other ones in there as well with like Sobinar hmm. and like uh, Elena who have nothing to do with the Soulbound, so, you know, like, um, so I think he's a little bit confused, but uh, what it sounds like is that, oh, he or she, sorry, I don't mean to, like, put you in a box, I'm sorry, um, but um, can we expect Gazia as part of a future Frontier Rift at any time? Um, well, at the moment, unfortunately, there is no plan to expand additional Frontier Rift, so mm -hmm. uh, the currently the reward... Uh, the reward event, uh, the reward for uh, such event will be available in uh, such a rift units and sphere will be made available in the rift frontier. Uh, in the sense that uh, you can, you can, you, uh, the original rift frontiers are uh, still available for summoners to revisit. So um, what what we will do is that we will uh, kind of like rerun uh, uh, the frontier rift instead of uh, uh, adding a new one. Um, the current the scoring system. Uh, will be reset and summoners will can try to achieve a new high scores uh, to get the about maybe about 6500 rift tokens per mission yeah, so uh, the answer for Gazia uh, Gazia uh, Frontier Rift right now is unfortunately no there's no plan for it yet uh, right now I think the team is focusing more on like the Altered Destiny the Vortex Arena and some seasonal or maybe from time to time collaboration event as well Mm -hmm. mm. But uh, the the old frontier will 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 be rerun will be will be will be made available as well. Mm. Okay, so we're focusing mm. more on reruns of mm. 
frontier rifts from the past um, and then maybe in the future sometime perhaps Gazia can be considered but there are no plans um, to make any fr new frontier rifts mm. based on him uh, anytime soon. Yep. It's the short version of that. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, uh, I mean, sorry to say that he's not coming anytime soon, Razor Dragon, but uh, thank you so much for your question. And thank you guys all for watching today's episode. Hopefully uh, you're excited for all of the content that is to come for 2020's Brave Summer. Uh, even if we ourselves cannot go out there to the beach to enjoy ourselves because we're staying at home, uh, self-quarantining, at least we can like imagine that we're out there with, you know, the cute summer Nyami or the cute summer Phelan or even Nyala, you know, like l let your imagination soar by playing Brave Frontier and enjoying <laughs> the summer through nice. um, our game as much as possible. Hopefully it, it serves us a type of es escapism so that you guys mm -hmm. can kill some time and just enjoy yourselves, uh, you know, while, while you're at home, mm -hmm. uh, staying safe and looking out for your health. Uh, okay. Anything you want to add before we leave today, Risky? Uh, no, I think I'm, I'm good. Just like the last last comment would be like, stay, stay, stay safe, stay healthy. <laughs> yes. That's right. Yep. Always look out for your, for yourself. Look out mm. for your family and for your friends, and mm. just um, do your part um, to ensure that you uh, are living as healthily as possible. Is the best way that I can put it. And yeah, be social, be socially responsible, I guess. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. All right. Okay, but we hope that you guys are doing well. Again, mm -hmm. take good care of yourselves, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye bye. -bye.